All right, don't go anywhere. We are hearing from Republican challenger David X. Sullivan. He's a former federal prosecutor of 30 years, and now he wants voters to give him a chance at elected office. The real story will return in a moment. Special election coverage begins Tuesday night at 6. You're watching The Real Story. Before the break, we heard from Congresswoman Johanna Hayes. We want to bring in her Republican challenger, David X. Sullivan. He's vying for public office after a long career as assistant United States attorney. His career there spanning 30 years. He joins us this morning. Good morning. Good morning, Jen. Thanks for being here. All right, so you have a really interesting background. Tell us about yourself. Uh, three decades as a federal prosecutor. What did you learn from all that time? Well, um, <laughs> 30 years as a federal prosecutor, um, doing a, a wide array of different types of cases, um, seeing how, you know, the federal law affects people. Uh, you know, I took an oath to support and defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic, uh, when I entered the office. And, uh, you know, I, I place a high premium on that. I believe in equal justice, uh, equal opportunity due process under the law and uh, I respect the law and I've enjoyed working with federal state and local law enforcement keeping here people here in Connecticut safe uh, during that time so it's it's a public service uh, I was very blessed to to serve and uh, I'm looking forward to continuing to serve the people of Connecticut and the people of the fifth congressional district I'm curious do you have a most memorable case that you worked on <laughs> um, no, I wouldn't say that. Um, you know, I, I've been asked about cases, and I think that, uh, you know, I, I'm very reluctant about trophy cases uh, to highlight someone else's misfortune. And I can tell you, uh, in, in the federal courtroom, especially when you see someone sentenced, uh, but after addressing a judge and returning to counsel table, you see the eyes, the faces of the family members and the loved ones of, of that person that made mistakes, that committed crimes, uh, significant crimes if you're in federal court. And uh, I never took any pleasure in that. Uh, I was pleased that we were able to stop someone uh, from doing something that the federal law prohibited them from doing. But uh, it's very tough on family and friends. Um, so it, it's, it was reward rewarding, but also very uh, somber moments as well. I can imagine. Uh, where are we lacking with our representation in Congress? Why do you want to go to Washington? Well, um, it's not really lacking. I would say, and I've said over 16 months, the math in Connecticut is simple. Five plus two equals one. We've had five Democrat congressmen, uh, two Democrat senators representing all of us here in Connecticut for more than a decade. I mean, throughout the Obama administration and now uh, during this administration, and uh, I think we need diversity of thought and ideas. Um, Connecticut has suffered. Uh, we have watched the Democrat Party move farther and farther to the left. And I don't think that uh, the representation that right now represents the, the values of many in Connecticut and certainly those in the 5th Congressional District. Um, Johanna Hayes um, has been in office two years, but in those two years, she's voted with Nancy Pelosi 100% of the time. And after that was after taking a pledge not to support Pelosi as Speaker of the House, and that was the first vote cast. So uh, we need leadership in Washington. We need new ideas, new thoughts. You know, prior to COVID, uh, the economy in this country was incredible. I mean, 7 million new jobs, 1.2 million manufacturing jobs. Uh, by lowering the corporate tax rate, $12 trillion reinvested in this country. But Connecticut has been suffering. I just saw that economists at uh, the University of Connecticut have said that over the last 31 years, Connecticut has uh, picked up 21,000 jobs. I've seen Joe Biden commercials right now where he's saying, and Joe got us out of the um, recession of 2007, 2008. Connecticut's still in that recession, Jen. Um, we have negative gross domestic product here in Connecticut. And in the fifth district alone, we've lost Hubble uh, in Bethel and Newtown, and we've lost McKesson Pharmaceutical in Farmington. And I know that Macy's here in Danbury um, is going to be closing in, in December. So retail is taking a hit. So we need to get out of and away from COVID uh, using uh, sensible precautions. Um, and we need to get this economy going. But this time, we need representation in, in Washington uh, that's going to bring some of this back to Connecticut. And I think that I'm the person for that. And I think we need some Republican representation to offset and balance a bit 
all the Democrats that are, are down in Washington right now serving. When you say we need to get away from COVID, what exactly does that mean? Because according to doctors, COVID's not going away right now. It's going to be with us possibly even into 2022. So explain what you meant by that statement. Well, uh, we've learned a lot more about COVID over the last six months. Uh, I don't know when there'll be a vaccine. I think we have to move forward, recognizing that a vaccine may not be forthcoming. Um, I know right now there's been a spike uh, globally. And as uh, the weather gets colder, uh, that's, that's a very strong possibility. I don't think that that's uh, anything that wasn't um, unexpected. They knew it was coming. But uh, we have to recognize that and we need to get the economy going at the same time. So we have to balance. And, um, you know, I, I've agreed with Governor Lamont about opening the schools and uh, listening to people talk today. Um, the COVID spike as it's coming is not coming from schools. It's not coming from business. It's coming from social gatherings, weddings and things like that. People are tired and worn out from COVID, but we do have to recognize that you're right, it's gonna be here for a little while, but we have to work and adapt uh, and assimilate and get this economy going. And, and Connecticut has suffered far too long, uh, and that was prior to COVID. Do you agree with the mask mandates that are out there and the other rules that the governor has put in place? Well, when you say mandates, uh, I think we should all be wearing masks inside. I think that uh, you know people should be exercising a lot of caution and be considerate of others. Uh, but as far as passing laws, it's going to be very interesting because I think it comes down to the courts. Uh, people's individual civil rights um, balanced by the uh, and offset by, uh, you know, public health and safety. I think we all have to be cautious and we all have to be responsible. But uh, I would hope that it's an individual choice, but I hope people make the right choice. Would you, if you were sent to Congress listen to doctors per se i know that you're saying you're not against mask wearing but you are saying individual rights you think trumps the ask to wear a mask how are you going to if you're sent to washington decide on what you're voting on if it has to do with health professionals well i, I believe in listening to everyone uh first and foremost the people in the 41 towns of this district um I've been endorsed by Nancy Johnson, and that was something that uh, over the last 16 months she's reinforced with me. Listen to the people of your district. Uh, they will guide you and they'll give you your best uh, ideas for legislation in Washington. It's, it's be here first and go to Washington second. And I certainly have great respect for the healthcare professionals. I think part of the problem becomes when you have competing interests and views, even among our healthcare professionals. Clearly, we, we have to be as careful as possible. With respect to any legislation, I would still have to see the legislation uh, before I could comment or, or, or speculate as to what I would do. You've put law and order front and center in your campaign, which makes sense, of course, uh, with your background as, as well. You've gotten the support of several police unions. I was reading them on the list. Two of them, interestingly, aren't in the district, uh, and Sonia and Shelton. How did those come about? Is there a backstory there, or they just threw their support behind you? You know, there really isn't a backstory. I was contacted by, by both those police unions that they were endorsing me, and I did point out that they I thanked them, but they weren't in the district. Uh, there are two towns that I did work with a great deal. Um, I've also been endorsed by the Connecticut Alliance of City Police, which is Waterbury, but also Naugatuck and New Haven. I take those endorsements to heart and I greatly appreciate them. Um, I am a law enforcement, law and order candidate. Uh, I mean, I've spent my career in public service that way. Uh, I really got into this campaign, though, because I was concerned about uh, us moving farther away from capitalism and towards socialism. And I really wanted Connecticut to be a part of that robust economy that we were enjoying uh, prior to COVID. So um, the law and order candidate has really more or less evolved because of what's going around, on around the country. And people want to be safe in their homes, um, in their communities, in their places of worship, in their schools. And that's really not a partisan issue. Um, so, I, I, you know, yes, I'm a law and order candidate, but um, what I'm preaching is really we want, we want to feel secure in our communities. And uh, I support the police who protect us. And talking to so many police, and I've gone to uh, 11 or 12 law enforcement rallies here in the 5th District, and I was up in Hartford when they were uh, putting this bill together. 
which I do oppose for many reasons, but uh, first and foremost, because they didn't have public hearings and it won't be enacted or effective until next year. And I think we can do much better. Police officers, law enforcement people do not uh, protect and do not want to work with bad police officers. Um, they, um, they are a blight and they are a blemish on all those who do the job well and every day risk their lives uh, in service of others. David, what, hap what needs to happen to quell the climate? Because you do have a group of people who feel like they're hurting right now and are upset. And, you know, that's why we're seeing uh, these protests and rallies and riots across the country. What needs to happen here?